Next, the U.S. government's called the WikiLeaks releases both inconsequential and threats to national security. So, which is it? Former British diplomat Karen Ross addressed what's actually in the cables, and Charles Ferguson on governments and secrets. Ferguson's director and producer of No End in Sight, the American occupation of Iraq, and Inside Job. Those who claim that the data in these cables are minor or not remarkable are very, very wrong. Uh, Rick Hertz, Hertzberg made that claim this week in The New Yorker. Um, Esther Dyson just suggested that too. The revelations are remarkable and in some cases game-changing. Uh, for instance, the revelation that the U.S. is conducting aerial reconnaissance of Lebanon at the request of the Lebanese government is extraordinarily potentially destabilizing for Lebanon right now. Uh, so don't claim that it's not, nothing particularly new. Other, uh, 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 other revelations such as the point-blank refusal of Karzai to deal with corruption or the discussion between uh, General Petraeus and the Yemeni president of how to bomb targets in his own country. These are extraordinary revelations. Second, um, it's not yet proven that the cables have caused harm to U.S. servicemen or officials or civilians, as the U.S. government is claiming, but undoubtedly there is serious and major harm to U.S. interests worldwide. Um, it's absurd for WikiLeaks or, frankly, the New York Times to claim that the process of redaction uh, that they've subjected these cables to somehow removes the possibility of harm. Um, the world is not a chessboard, it is a complex system. You make a big change in one piece of the forest, this is going to ramify in many different ways across the forest, including far away, in ways that are good and bad, uh, but above all, unpredictable. Um, third, governments are responding by locking their data tighter. Uh, but there's a fundamental paradox and con contradiction in doing this because governments need to share information. They can't operate by word of mouth. In order to be effective diplomatically, your diplomats have got to know what's going on. Um, one of the reasons the good diplomatic services share everything that's sensitive amongst their operational staff. Um, one of the reasons the UN is not effective is because nothing sensitive is shared within the UN Secretariat because everything is leaked. Um, so if governments to be a, are to, be, to remain effective, they've got to share data amongst themselves, which means that they will remain vulnerable to WikiLeaks in the future. Um, fourthly, I'm surprised at those who claim that governments need secrecy in order to operate without knowing what it is that governments are keeping secret. Um, I worked on very sensitive issues, including Afghanistan, Iraq, terrorism for many years, and uh, far too much is kept secret. Um, secrecy does not promote good policy making. Um, I worked a lot on Iraq, on sanctions on Iraq. This was a very bad policy that caused immense harm to the civilian population of Iraq. I have no doubt that if that policy had been conducted under greater public scrutiny, it would have been a better policy. Um, the argument that congressional or parliamentary scrutiny are adequate checks and balances on our governments doesn't stand up to scrutiny. I have testified to Congress and to the British Parliament many times, uh, but I testified only after I resigned and only after my government knew about me, sorry, after the Parliament knew about me. Before I resigned, when I worked on all, all of these issues, I was never scrutinized or questioned by parliamentarians or, or people in Congress, or frankly, to any adequate de degree by journalists. Uh, fifthly, this is perhaps one reason why WikiLeaks exists uh, another is, is that, of course, uh, people feel that government has not told them the truth, particularly over the last few years in the war on terror, Iraq, Afghanistan, and all the rest of it. Um, people are right to think that. I resigned from the British government because it lied about its reasons for going to war and had ignored available alternatives to war, which is a fundamental duty of government. Um, if governments did not lie, then WikiLeaks um, would not be so... Uh, uh, potent. The National Security Letter is a form of administrative subpoena that has existed in American law since the late 1950s. Uh, following the 9-11 attacks and the passage of the Patriot Act, the usage and legal control of national security letters was changed very dramatically. And um, now there are a large, unknown, classified number of people who can issue national security letters which are an administrative subpoena requiring the recipient to divulge information to the government 
and also making it a felony for the recipient to divulge to anyone, including his or her attorney, what the information is or even that they have received a national security letter. So how many of these are issued every year? Is it 500? Is it 1,000? Does anybody know? How about 50,000? And you know that's disturbing. And, and equally disturbing is that the use of these things has uh, not changed since Mr. Obama uh, took office. So, uh, and, and I've encountered you know, these kinds of issues in the making of my films, and let me close with two of them. And, and again, by saying this, I'm not saying that I endorse everything that Mr. Assange or WikiLeaks have done. I don't. I'm very troubled by some parts of it and very ambivalent about a lot of it. But uh, when making my first film, which is about the occupation of Iraq, I learned fairly quickly that uh, in the invasion of Iraq, the Defense Department had had 14 high-definition camera crews that took a total of 200 hours worth of footage. It has never been militarily classified. Only 18 minutes of it has ever been released. We tried to obtain the 200 hours of footage. First, they said no, then we hired lawyers. Then eventually, when we were almost finished with production and the issue was moot, which they knew, um, they said for the modest sum of $100,000 and after a delay of approximately six months, they would make the footage available to us. And uh, then, of course, in the financial crisis, uh, there have been zero criminal prosecutions. There have been a handful of civil cases. The civil cases have been settled without requiring admissions of guilt. Even the limited subpoenas that have been issued have revealed extraordinarily unethical, probably illegal, and disturbing information. But there has been no serious effort to use subpoena power to investigate what these people have done. Uh, the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, which is scheduled to provide its report uh, in another month or two, had a total budget of $6 million, uh, in contrast to which the special prosecutor investigating Mr. Clinton had a budget of about uh, 10 times that. Uh, it has a budget of $6 million. It had subpoena power. Subpoenas had to be approved by uh, both parties, and the first subpoena was issued after they'd been working for six months. They've issued less than two dozen subpoenas. So uh, unfortunately, there is a place for leaking in the modern world. <laughs>